cried. Okay, it looks like I'm live. I don't know why that always takes a minute, but it does just to show up. So let's wait a second for some folks to get in here. Let me, I'm going to be changing this view also so that you can really see what I'm doing. All right. Hi, I'm Natalie, Natalie Santini of So Hungry Hippie. Nice to see you. If you're here, please let me know how you're doing, where you're tuning in from. Um, I'm going to put a link here. Hi, Kat. I was just thinking how nice it is that you're able to show up now because, you know, working from home, that kind of thing. It's so cool. Okay, I don't know why that link I just posted showed twice, but we're just going to roll with it. All right, so I am going to show you how I make my confetti case. And this is a little bit different size. <clears throat> <laughs> I hate those frogs that get in my throat. <laughs> this is a little bit different size than the easy zipper cases. I love this size. I think it's really spot on. Uh, so even if you don't want to venture into the vinyl overlay, you could just get the pattern and use the size as your base. I revamped the pattern this week. It's in PDF at SoHungryHippie.com. And it now has pattern pieces for you to trace and draw because I know a lot of you are not confident in measuring your rectangles. So I added that so you're good to go. And hi, hi, Debbie. Hi, Erin. Hi, Laura. Uh, so let's get going. I am going to be using the scraps we had left over from last week's live with the orange peel quilt. So let me go to my computer and switch the view. Let's do picture in picture. See if this works okay. Yeah, here we go. So last week we did all those orange peels, which by the way, the free PDF is on my website. I, I turned every all of those free patterns into a Google Drive folder that you can just access. If you're signed up for my newsletter, you have that. It's it's there for you. I'll put it in this weekend's newsletter again in case you've lost the link, or you can message me or whatever and I can send it. But I just thought maybe it would be easier for a lot of people to just have that folder at all times. <laughs> okay, so we have all these scraps left over. So what we're gonna do carefully, if you want to use your acrylic ruler, to help guide you, you can, as, as far as like having your hands away. I do not, because I've been doing these since 2016, this pattern, it's it was one of my uh, first, and I revamped it because, you know, as you learn more and do more and do better, or whatever that saying is that Oprah said, do you know what I mean? Uh, know better, do better, or something like that, I don't know. Oprah's wisdom, I just try to keep it in my head, but obviously I'm jumbling it a little bit. Anywho, babble, babble. Let's take these and chop them up. Now, with your rotary cutter, what you don't want to do is this action. <laughs> I tried that, and you create a real fuzzy mess, not to mention it's a little bit dangerous if your hand is anywhere nearby. So what I recommend is you just put your rotary cutter down and you go one direction. Now, I will take these scraps and turn them. Watch. Take my pile, kind of like, I don't know, food, garlic, and go another direction. But see, I'm still just traveling that one direction. I'm lifting the rotary cutter and uh, I'm not doing this because it's tempting, I know. So if your pieces look satisfying to you, go ahead and use them. Make sure to not get your fingers in the way, okay? I'm gonna say that like 80,000 times. This pile here is silk noil. Um, that's how it's spelled. I'm probably saying it wrong. It's probably French and it's like silk noil or something fancy, but whatever. Um, 
I chopped this up and tried it out on a case last night and it does work, but because of that different substrate, it ends up uh, having more like lint and uh, I don't know, cloudy stuff in the case. So I didn't like the look of it, so I don't recommend it, but I do recommend experimenting because you might find another substrate that you like, or you might have some hot mess of a scrap pile and just say, I'm just gonna cut all that up. I'm all here for it. Experiment, that's how we learn, right? So we're also going to be using 10 gauge vinyl. I get a lot of questions about my vinyl. <laughs> and all I wanna say is, feel free to experiment with whatever you want to. I use this 10 gauge vinyl because it's still quite malleable and easy to turn, especially for bags and zipper cases when you're just using the vinyl and you wanna burst the bag, turn it right side out again. It's very easy to turn. It's very easy to heat with a blow dryer and get all wrinkles out. It's easy to cut with scissors, rotary cutter, all of that. Um, I used to carry a thicker 16 gauge and it just was more of a barrier for people because even though it sewed well and was very nice, it is much harder to turn. So, I mean, it's not like you have to have Rambo biceps, but it's just, you know, it's more of a pain. So that's why I just went to the 10 gauge. This is still strong enough to work in bags and vinyl overlays and almost all the applications you're gonna wanna do. Uh, it's not, it's not like squishy and flimsy like apparel vinyl. Sometimes I get a question from somebody who's like, I wanna make a skirt, can I use this vinyl? And I say, well, you can, but it's not apparel weight. It's not gonna probably feel good. And I, I wouldn't wanna, I wouldn't want to wear that. So there we go, okay? You know my soft vinyl is what I recommend for apparel. Oh my gosh, hi, I just clicked back over. Bethany, Joanna, Angie, Georgina. <laughs> I'll keep doing that throughout. Okay, anywho, let's do this. So what we're going to do with our little confetti that we made, this is not nearly enough. Like I'm going to need to cut a lot more confetti, but I won't waste your time with that. I'm just going to get to it. This is my exterior piece. And this, you can't really tell because the lights in here have to be so bright, so I don't look like I'm coming at you from a cave. But this is a cheap muslin, uh, almost like a canvas cream material. So muslin in the UK, I see one of my friends here from the UK, muslin is not muslin like it is in the UK. We would call that cheesecloth. Um, so think of just like a, a basic material, cotton. You don't have to spend money. That, that's my point. Just get some $3 a meter, $3 a yard uh, fabric at the store and experiment with this. So I'm using that for the exterior because as you can see in the example, it helps the confetti show up a lot. So if you wanna do a dark exterior fabric, I recommend your confetti be a light color or, you know, so I've seen people do white background with black confetti. You, you just want it to pop. So keep that in mind. And for my interior, I'm just using the same material because I have a ton of it and it's really inexpensive. So that's what I'm using. Now, I recommend that you fuse SF101, also called ShapeFlex, to all of your pieces both exteriors, both linings. And I don't recommend that you use foam on this project, just because when we add that vinyl layer, it gives enough body to the bag, the zipper pouch, and you don't need that foam. But as always, you do you. And if you want to, then do it. Let's see, Kat had a question. What do you put Oh, hold on. What do you put on the presser foot if you don't have the Teflon foot? Okay, so you can put clear tape, cello tape, on the underneath of your foot in a pinch. 
and that will usually work. Some people will put a, a sheet of tissue paper over the top of the vinyl and sew through it and then pull it away after the fact. I find it tedious and annoying because you have to pull it out from all those stitches and sometimes you need tweezers. And the tape trick, I only recommend that if you're in a pinch or like just doing this for today and you don't know if you ever want to sew vinyl again. But if you're at all going to make more than one thing with vinyl, get a tough on foot. And do get the proper foot for your machine model. Don't buy this stuff on Amazon. I'm, I am not kidding you. I've bought feet that said they were a Janome foot or a Bernina foot. And then I get them and they're not working properly. And I almost messed up one of my machines that way. So I would get it from your sewing machine local shop. Or I would go to someplace like sewing, sewingpartsonline.com. They carry true, true brand parts for your machine. So it's just a word of precaution, you guys, because I've done that and I was so upset. I feel like I always say, oh, I cried. Well, I did because do you ever just get so mad you cry? Like, <sighs> that's how I got. All right, so Kat brought up a really good point. I was starting to sew this and then... Let me just pull this off here. I'm going to show you this Teflon foot. Mine is white. And it uh, is for this particular Bernina, which is a 1008. And it just allows me to glide right over that vinyl. No sticking. Some brands call it a non-stick foot. I've seen some feet that are green. It, it, the color doesn't matter. It just makes sure it's a non-stick foot or a Teflon foot. A roller foot is okay, but it's not the same. It's not going to work the same. It's not as good as a Teflon foot. And I've had people email me and tell me, oh my gosh, you were right. When I, I stopped using my roller foot and used the Teflon foot, it was a lot better and easier. So whoop, whoop, I'm right about some things in my life. Okay, so anywho, here we go. We've got this uh, confetti. Let me, let me minimize this a second. Okay. All right, so this is what you're going to do with your confetti. Oh, um, Robin is asking what kind of facing, interfacing. This is SF101 Shape Flex. This is Pelon SF101 or Shape Flex. And that's in my pattern. All the measurements for this stuff is in my pattern. It's on sale this week, six bucks. I ask that if you have a ton of questions, get the pattern because I worked so hard on it. There's, um, and like I said, it's from 2016, but I completely revamped it over the last couple of weeks. So I put a QR code in there that you can scan with your phone and it'll take you right to my free vinyl sewing guide for all those tips that I have in there for successful vinyl sewing. It also has a video link. And if you don't wanna come back and watch this live, it has a full walkthrough of me making this that's edited, you know, so it's faster. I think it's like 27 minutes. I made a case like this. And that link is in that pattern also. So, yay. Okay, so this is the exterior, one piece of the exterior case. Now. I would normally fill this up a little more, but that's personal preference. This is my piece of vinyl, and I'm just gonna lay it right on top. Make sure that you don't have like a hair caught in there. I mean, I'm the queen of that, and I have to make sure I don't get anything caught underneath there. My pug, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, just, you don't want any of that caught because it's forever. And then we're going to do this. Use your wonder clips. You don't want to use pins unless you can be super careful and keep your pins within that seam allowance and never see the holes. But if you're not that disciplined, like I'm not, then use clip, clips, wonder clips. And these don't matter on brand, like just get some clips. I use all different sizes. These are the original, like, regular size, 
and then these are a size up, and then these are the jumbo size. And I just think they're handy for all kinds of things. I've even used my jumbo clips for um, closing my potato chip bags. <laughs> I've used them to put my bangs back while I'm sewing. You know what I mean? It's just, it's fun. So now the vinyl is on there. And I've already got one here ready to go. I'm going to tilt it up a little bit. First, we're going to sew around the perimeter. And what you want to do is turn your stitch length to about a three millimeter. That's three on my machine. It might be different on yours, but what you don't want is to sew this vinyl with a really tight stitch, like a two millimeter, too tight. You're going to perforate your vinyl and it'll just tear. So take care when sewing vinyl to not have your stitch too tiny. And I'm just going to come around here. I'm using about a 1 8 inch seam allowance, and I'm sewing around these edges. You can baste this with a, you know, a longer stitch length if you want. Sometimes I start basting, and then I forget to turn my stitch back to normal. And I'm like, ah, oh, just sewed that whole pant leg with a huge stitch. Just me, probably. I'm just going around that outer edge. The vinyl's flat. Nothing is lined up super perfectly as far as, uh, I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean. So what I mean is I have some vinyl overhang on this edge, I'm just gonna trim it away. You can see some of my interfacing on the outer edges. That's just cause I'm not super precise when I'm cutting my Interfacing, I like to trim the excess away, if that makes sense. I like it all covered. So I'd rather just trim away later. Oh, and I didn't print out the, the fancy color version, but this is what the PDF will look like. So it, this prints off as a whole sheet and you just fold it. And then here are the pattern, you know, the, the sheets. I make them on eight by 11 because then we have a lot of info on the sheet and the cutting chart is in here. Here's the QR code, pattern pieces, and all the photos are full color. If you choose to print in full color, some people don't even print anymore. They're able to just look at that on their iPad or their screen. <sighs> I am not one of those people. <laughs> I like paper. I know. Okay, so let me see if I can turn down this light a smidge here. All right, there. I think you can see that a little better. What I'm going to do since I have some overhang is come in here and just trim it up nice so that my, oops, so that my seams aren't too bulky. And I do need to change my rotary blade, my goodness. I've had this one in for so long. See, I'm just pushing that excess away. Not a problem. I'm not really trimming any of the exterior body fabric. I'm just trimming away excess vinyl and interfacing. And I stitched just inside so that um, the confetti is stuck in there. And it will move around. If you want to keep it like this, you certainly can. That's awesome. I, however, like to do a little design to kind of keep it more or less in place, sort of. Well, anywho, that's how mine's going to end up. And what I like to do is I start in the center and I love just a spiral stitch. And there's no measuring involved. I don't worry about the, the design or, you know, this, think of this kind of like quilting or fashion quilting almost. It just, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you do is correct and just have fun. You could do straight lines. You could do zigzags. You could do whatever you want. But this is what I do. I start and then I'm with the needle down, I'm going to trim that thread away so that I can just keep going around and around. 
And if you want to use your foot as a width guide, you can. I don't. I just have fun. And I all I'm doing, I'm lightly turning the case with my fingers. I'm not pressing down. The foot is just gliding. I leave my feed dogs. Everything is just the same. Normal sewing. All I'm doing is spinning my confetti case. You know what? I'm going to switch the camera so you can see even better. Look away if you get dizzy. I'm going to spin this camera around. Oh, yeah. Hopefully my head's not in the way. Just shut off the light. Ooh, that's even better. So I'm just totally relaxed, not worried about this. This is going to be so unique and different than anything else. If you sell your stuff at craft markets, people are going to be like, ooh. <laughs> and you can stop whenever you want. You don't have to do this over the whole case. Don't you love these kind of projects where it's just up to you? You make the rules for once in your life. Some of the confetti will still move, but a lot of it is being caught by those stitches and it'll just remain where it's at. All right, I'm going to stop here. You don't have to backstitch or do anything. Just stop and trim my threads. I really like it. I'm just going to trim my threads here. Let's see here. I do need to get, oh, thanks, Bethany. Um, I, that's one of my favorite quilts. I did that a couple of years ago, and then my friend Dana quilted it for me. It was like her first quilt to quilt. I really love it. It's just simplicity, you know, and the neon like makes it light up. I just sew and spell check. <laughs> I like that. Okay, I'm going to swing the camera back around so you're not looking at my roots and judging me. I know you are. Don't even play. I know you are. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let me move this big ruler. So that's what I would do for the other side too this side, you know, and just have fun with it. That is the name of the game. Now for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to sew the perimeter of this one and get back to it and show you how we finish this up. These get really fast. You can production sew these babies. And I'm telling you, the, the teens, they love it. Sometimes I think I'm still a teen but I'm in my 40s, and I'm proud of it. Okay, this is just going to trap that confetti inside. And see how fast you can go with that final foot? It's just, I mean, it's just game-changing. To think that anyone suffers trying to sew vinyl with a normal foot. It hurts my heart. Okay, here we go. Trimming this up. And then we're going to get to the zipper top because I know you have some questions about the zippers. I do have number five and one color of number three in my shop. If you're looking for handbag zippers, I do have some zipper tape or whatever. Um, that I love using. But I do want to mention that any zipper will, will work. I mean, I wouldn't use an invisible zipper, but I would use, if you've got this kind, which is just your standard YKK uh, zipper that a lot of places sell online, that'll work. I'm gonna use a number five, which is wider. You can see the width difference. 
it all works. But what matters is your seam allowance. So if you don't want much zipper tape showing at the top, you're just gonna take a bigger seam allowance. So this one, this case was made with just a standard zipper. I don't know, these are probably, I don't even know how much they are because I don't sell them. <laughs> That'll work if you've got those laying around, use it. Okay, this part is fun because I love showing how easy zipper cases are to make. They're so much fun. It's one of the reasons I started sewing. First, you're gonna take your zipper and those zipper tabs that I tell you to cut out in the pattern, you're gonna fold them so the edges meet. This light is a little bright. Maybe it's the white. I should probably start using black fabric. But you're gonna take those edges to meet in the middle and then fold it again. So it's kind of like a little Pac-Man. And you just press it so that it behaves. Cut your zipper to the proper length that I tell you in the pattern. It's like an inch less wide than your body pieces. And put it on there and sew across. Now, if you're using a zipper like I am, you're fine to just sew across those coil, the coil, zipper teeth. If you're using a metal zipper, like, you know, the kind on a, on a jacket, you're going to have to sew up to the coil and then hand crank across those teeth. Or you'll bust your needle. And I only mention that because I did that as a beginner. I did not understand that zippers were not created equally. <laughs> They're not all the same. And when you don't have a sewing experience, you don't know this. Now we're gonna take the zipper edges and trim the excess away. So you're just making those tabs the same length or width as your zipper tape. Nice and clean and great looking, right? Now take one of your exterior pieces. I know, cat zippers scare a lot of people. You're not alone. You are not alone. Hi, Connie. Late is better than never. I'm glad to have you here. Um, and Elizabeth, so thrilled. Yay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Carla. Um, okay, let me, let me focus. Here we go. Take your zipper. See how that pole is facing us? Turn it away. Now I like to call this right sides together with the exterior. Now I see I, I didn't cut mine exactly right. I should have about a finger width of space on each end, but I'm not going to unpick it and, and do that to you all. I'm just going to carry on. But know that if you cut, like I tell you to, do what I say, not what I did, right? <laughs> and cut the proper length, your zipper will be like, like this. Oh my gosh, can you hear my pug? Tori, you should be embarrassed. Her snoring is so loud. I was on a Zoom call earlier and the person was like, oh my gosh, is that your husband? <laughs> I should have said yes. Yeah, can you believe what I have to live with? Ah, I forgot my zipper foot. That's okay. I'm just going to sew this because, as you know, a lot of my machines are downstairs on the porch, so I'm not going to run and get it. But normally, right now, I would switch to my zipper foot, which is like a single ski for my machine model. And so it's just easier to sew along that zipper coil with a zipper foot. So do it. Just Google it. There's somebody on YouTube that has a video for that. Do I? I think I might. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody does. If I don't, somebody does. And if not, you can consult your manual. If you lost your manual like I do, they're online now. So you just Google up your machine and model manual and it's all like a PDF now. Modern internet, I tell you. So because I don't have my zipper foot, I'm going to move my needle over to the left so that I'm right by my zipper coil. That's a handy trick if you 
ever find yourself not being able to find your zipper foot, sometimes just the needle position, there's a, a lever or a button, if you have a computer machine, that can let you move your needle over. So I'm just gonna sew along this zipper tape. Now to speed it up, you could um, attach your lining at the same time, but if you're newer to this, I don't want you doing that because you'll, you'll mess it up. <laughs> I mean, I did. Maybe you're better than me. <laughs> so now I'm gonna take the lining right side facing this right side. So right sides together. And I'm gonna bring it up to the top and use clips to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna show you, darn it, I should have put in like red or black thread so you'd be able to see. But if we flip it over, I have a stitching line. See, I gotta write myself notes. Next time I'll use black thread. But the, what I just sewed, that stitching line is showing up here. So when I put it in my machine, now I'm attaching the lining on one side, I'm just gonna sew right on top of that stitching line I just did. So then I know everything is attached and secure and on there. Now, a quick tip, use your fingers to make sure that your zipper pull is out of the way as you're sewing, because mine is coming up and I can feel it. And sometimes that little thing will like flip on you and be in your sewing line. Um, so make sure it's out of the way and you're not going to have your needle hit it. The number of times I've done that. Okay, so now it looks kind of nuts, right? But don't worry. We're going to fold that lining back out of the way. And let me show you here. So this is how it was. Fold your lining up and wrong sides together. See how this is looking already? Make sure you take your iron and press this lining down. The number of times as a beginner that I didn't realize my lining was way up here in the teeth. I mean, these are just little things you might not think to check when you're not used to making zipper pouches. So I'm telling you. So I've pressed that back and I've finger pressed this. If you want to top stitch now, you can, but I wait till both sides are on and I do it all at once. Because I like it like that. So this is my other exterior. Oh, it looks kind of puny compared to that one. I don't care. I'm inclusive and we're going to include that one. So now you're just taking your exterior, right? This piece we just built, right sides together. It's almost always right sides together when you're sewing something. And that was a concept that did not make sense to me before I learned to sew. I mean, as I was learning, as I was a beginner, I'm like, what? And eventually, you know, it's second nature. You don't even think right sides together anymore. You just do. So remember, you'll have a finger width space on each end. That's the correct. You want to center that. And we're going to sew this side down. I'm going to... Hi, Dalva. Yay. Hi, Sam. Yay. Hi, Robin. Oh, thank you. So nice of you. Okay, yep, my zipper pull is out of the way, so I'm going to scooch by it. And now the exterior is on. So this is how it's going to look. Here's the exterior that we just sewed on. You're looking at the wrong side right now, okay? And this is the side, this is the lining correct side. So we want to take our remaining lining piece and sew it right sides together with this side. So I'm gonna put it on the table so you can see a little better. This is what it's looking like so far. 
I'm going to take the right side. This is the muslin. This is the interfacing side and place it with that one, matching that top edge and use clips to hold in place. And this is the same process for pretty much all my zipper case patterns. I don't, I think other people do this process, but maybe they have another way. That's cool. This is just easy for my brain to keep in mind. So I keep it the same, right? The kiss method. When I was in the army, uh, they would constantly tell us kiss method, kiss method. And I was like, finally one day, what is the kiss method? What and the drill sergeant looked at me dead in the eyes and said, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. Thanks for that, Joe Sergeant. <laughs> I love drill sergeants. All right. Really? So that's on. Now I'm going to put this on the desk. You're going to flip up that lining. So now we're looking at both right sides of the lining. But let's flip it so that both outsides. So we have both linings here and we have both outsides here. Okay. I am going to press that out of the way. Like I already said, I have sewn pouches all the way together and not noticed that my lining was into my zipper coil. So mad. And yes, you're wondering, is the iron okay like this with that vinyl through the other side? Yeah, it's okay. Mine steamed up on this side because I didn't quilt it. So it steamed up a little, but that'll go away. That'll dissipate. Now, you just don't want to sit your iron there for, you know, a minute. Like, don't do that. Okay, so now we're just going to top stitch right down those edges. Dun, dun, dun. And then we have our strap loop to put on. And I actually didn't cut the wrist strap uh, for this one. I don't know why I forgot. But... My wrist strap instructions and in the video will show you the whole thing. I'm not sure why I forgot to do that. Life, I guess. This is why I also like to have my little extension table on my machine because it lets me have a surface there and everything just stays even and less, less apt to breaking. So on this model, this is how it looks without the extension table. So if you have the option of buying one of these, I would. They have all kinds. They have clear ones that can fit many different models now. I've had this machine forever. You might have to start, I should mention this, you might have to start up on the case, not, for instance, not the case here and your foot here, and then you start, start on the case. Because it's a little bit of a hump there. I'm paranoid about that lining, yes, it's okay. So I'm just sewing about an eighth of an inch away from where that fabric meets the zipper. And I, I do this because I like having everything stay put. You don't have to do this part, but when you're using the case, sometimes you know, your lining might start to come up a little and annoy you. So this is now put together. At this point, you can add your tag. I usually do it over here. If you have a little bit excess on any which side, don't worry if you need to do a little trim. I like to trim my threads away. It's gonna end up just fine. Here's the strap loop. 
it's made the same way as a zipper tab. It's just longer. So I'm going to press this and sew the open edge closed and we're almost there. If you wanted to sew both sides, feel free. So here's my strap loop. I'm going to fold it and I just attach it like from that top edge. I like to put it about an inch and a half down and I let some overhang and I sew here and then I trim this away. This is what I will attach my strap, my actual wrist strap with the lobster clasp to later. Um, it's handy. You don't have to add this. If you don't want it, don't do it. It's fine. And that gets sewn again. So you don't have to worry about back stitching if you forgot. It's going to get sewn anyways. Now at this point, I like to put my exteriors together and use clips to hold in place. How's everybody doing? Hanging in there okay? I know this is, we're already at 40 minutes. I'm going to speed it up. We're going to, we're going to get you going. I don't know about you. Sometimes I get antsy when I have to sit at a computer. Actually, not sometimes. Every single time I get antsy. So I feel, I feel you if you're feeling like, oh my God, hurry up. <laughs> ah! Okay. Where's my marker? Can you use a pen? We're going to measure inch in the, in the lower corners. So uh, remember the lining is just a smidge shorter than our exterior and that's just so when you sew it together and push it back in you have a really nice tight fitting lining. Also when I sew lining I always bring my seam allowance in a bit like this. It's just a gradual taper and it's personal preference. You don't ever have to do that. I don't say that particularly in the pattern because it confuses people. For 12 years, I sewed everything the same. I never had a problem with it. I'm not super nitpicky. But the better you get at things, the more you notice little minute details, right? So if you want to taper your seam allowance on the lining to make it fit tight inside, then do that, okay? And that's why the lining is a quarter inch shorter than the exterior panels because I just want to make sure it's really nice and snug. Um, oh, thanks, Connie. So I am going to draw box corners here. I like to use my acrylic ruler. My mom does templates. So she will, she has like squares cut out of hard plastic and uses that as her model every time for a bottom corner. It's pretty genius. I just lose stuff. So I, you know. I do this. Here's an inch. Here's an inch. And I'm going from the outer edge. I am not going from the seam allowance. So hold on. I was talking and I got to make sure I did that one right because I almost did it. No shame in your game if you need to measure these two or three times. Not ever wrong. Careful. Because if they're off, you'll have a wonky pouch and nobody wants that. So this one is tripping me out. Is, is this? Yeah, that is correct. I must have cut this piece a tiny bit big. Okay, so then I'm going to come in and cut. Oh, shoot. Eee! See, I didn't follow my own pattern. We want to sew these edges first because then when we cut, will pinch out those boxed corners. So for the lining, this is the lining. I'm going to start here and end here so that I give myself space to turn this bag out later. Actually, I'm going to give myself a little bit more space. And you know what my trick is that I do is red pins like a stop sign. No joke. I need all the parameters or I will daydream and like the Alice in Wonderland. So I'm going to sew around the entire perimeter. 
like a generous quarter inch, I believe. When you come up to those zipper tabs, I have this circled and bold and everything in the pattern. You wanna make sure you're not sewing over the zipper tabs. You're going right by them. You're just gonna ski right by them. You just barely miss them. Now, remember I messed up on my zipper length, so mine I'm gonna be sewing over, but I'm not going to right now because I'm actually gonna fix that afterwards. But that prevents like those pinched, puckered zipper tab that you sometimes see on makes, no judgment. You don't wanna sew over those zipper tabs. So I'm coming up, I'm, you might be wondering about that vinyl, the outer edge that we sewed to keep the confetti in. I'm just bigger than that. So I'm not sewing in the same place. With the vinyl, because it's vinyl, we don't want to perforate it. You don't want to sew one seam and then one seam right on top of it. You want to be here. So here was the vinyl stitch line or baseline for keeping the confetti in. And this is where I am now. I'm just, depending on your viewpoint, inside or outside of it. And here we come up to the other zipper tab. I just am sewing over that loop again. And I'm gonna pull mine out because, as you know, I messed up my zipper a little bit. It's okay self-tolerance. And turning it, and I'm coming up to that area where I need to stop. I've got my stop sign pins. I'm going to stop there. Okay, now I'm going to pull those pins out so I don't hurt myself. And we're gonna cut the corners out, but let me turn down this light. I don't know why this changes, maybe with sunlight, I guess. That still looks a little bright. Watch out, Tori. <laughs> okay, is that a little better? Yeah, here we go. So here we are, we're gonna cut out our corners. We're almost there. I use my scissors for corner cutting most of the time. I just have a little bit more control. This one is harder to cut because you're cutting through that vinyl also, but it's not like, you know, we're using the 10 gauge, so it's, it's easy. I'm just letting you know it feels different than that, the lining. Okay, so we have our corners cut out. I'm gonna trim this even so that I can check this. I always make sure my corners are even, especially on the exterior. They have to be good. So now pull this apart. Now this is a tiny boxed corner, but I, I did bigger ones and I didn't like the look of the pouch. You have my permission to experiment. You always do. You know that. You don't need anybody's permission. If you want to make bigger ones, you certainly can. I just like the look of this one, this size. So because we have vinyl on that exterior, it can take a little maneuvering to get those corners out. Sometimes what I'll do is come in from the lining. Oh my gosh, you guys, I forgot to open my zipper. <laughs> I have that in bold and I'm the designer and I forgot it oh oh that's okay you know what I'm so glad that you get to see my humanity <laughs> okay so I have to Get in there somehow. Of course, I'm on the opposite end. Oh, has anyone ever done this? Probably not on a live. Good Lord. 
Oh, well, there we go. I feel it. I'm pushing it open. See, you can always redeem if you make a mistake. That's what I love about sewing. Now it's open. Now it's all the way. <laughs> I get distracted 24 seven. But yes, talking and making is a challenge. That is for sure. Okay, here we go. Now it's open. I'm going to close out that gap that I just unpicked. All right, here we go. So like I was saying, sometimes I come in from the lining and push, like my hand is right here and I'm just pushing that corner and I'm nesting my seams. So one seam goes one way, the other seam goes the other way. I'm gonna use a clip to hold that in place. Come in and do the other side. If your seams are pulling apart here, don't worry, just go sew them up again. It's not a big deal at all. Sometimes that happens to me and I just do another stitch, it's okay. So you can see how this is almost, you know, it's taken shape now. So we're just gonna sew right across that edge on both of those corners and then we'll repeat down here for the lining. I always do one set at a time and it's worth mentioning to make sure that your vinyl is on both sides. Once in a while, the vinyl wants to stick and it'll just be on one side. Do you know what I mean? And so you'll have to unpick it and do it again. So just, it's worth, I call it a finger swipe. If you're coming in from this way, just make sure the vinyl is on either side, both sides, both sides. And uh, then proceed to sew. And I'm still on a three millimeter. For corners, I do back stitch for sure. If you feel that you're going to put a brick in your zipper case, you'll probably want to do another stitching line of zigzag stitch. I will not. I'm just, you know, sometimes I'm sarcastic, funny. I hope it translates. <laughs> sometimes I think I'm funny and other people are like... <laughs> <laughs> Such is life. I'm going to repeat that. We're almost done. This is the lining. Same old thing on the lining. There's one corner. And, ooh, then the other corner. Nesting the seams. One seam goes one way. One seam goes the other way. If you're here late and missed the intro, I am using my 10 gauge vinyl clear in my shop at So Hungry Hippie. Uh, any, any vinyl will work. It's okay. Um, if you have some in your stash and want to try this out, um, I'm here for it. So now we're gonna turn this. Now, if you're having trouble with this part and getting super annoyed, take your hair dryer or blow dryer and just like a 10, 20 seconds and it'll soften that vinyl up and it'll be easier to turn. <laughs> I like when you laugh at yourself while sewing. Whilst sewing. Oh, are you British? I love that word, whilst. Such a good word. Um, I do more than laugh at myself. Sometimes I cuss at myself. Sometimes I scream in the air. Sometimes I do a jig. Sometimes I talk to myself like more than I want to admit. <laughs> My grandma did that all the time. I'd catch her like full blown conversations. And now I'm doing it. It's like, ugh in our DNA, I think. <laughs> Is that an overshare? <laughs> okay, so you're gonna push out all those corners, push, push them out, push them out. And then for the zipper tabs, you're gonna push those out quite a bit. And remember, I gotta fix my zipper length, so mine are gonna look crazy right here. But my point is you come in here with your thumb and you really push them out. 
Oftentimes, if somebody sends me an email and they're like, my zipper tabs do not look right, they just haven't pushed them out far enough. And I'm like, get in there with your thumb and add some fervor because you need to push. And then it works. So I'm just going to fold in that lining <laughs> and close up my lining at the bottom. If you want to hand stitch, go for it. I do not because it's down there in the lining. I don't think anybody that doesn't sew ever looks for that or checks or notices. I don't know. I never did. Now, after sewing for so long, I find myself looking at scenes of, you know, clothing at Macy's or whatever, and I'm, I'm just astonished how poor quality some things are. And we just don't know that unless you actually make things. Um, and I'm not banging, uh, banging, down, downing any company. I know they do what they have to do, but like if you're a burged off Goodman or whatever that store is and you're paying a lot of money for a top, you want the seams to be done right. You know what I'm saying? I've never shot there in my life. So I don't really even know what I'm saying. Okay. Here we are. And there is the finished case. And I love it. And see the zipper looks the same as my smaller zipper because I just took a bigger seam allowance. So just know that you can always adjust your materials and use what you've got. Uh, let's see here. Let me go through and see if Anybody has any questions? Um, hello from Chicago. Are you boxing the corners? Yes. So hopefully you stayed Freddie and saw me. I just boxed the corners with the vinyl. Yep. And that's in the pattern. I mean, everything is laid out there for you. If you ever have any questions, feel free to message me. Um, my email is in the pattern, I believe, Natalie at SoHungryHippie.com. And I'm also on Instagram, SoHungryHippie. And I check my messages at least once a day. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> I'm working from home with you in the background. Yay! So good, Anne. So good. Join late because I'm babysitting my... Oh, squishy babies. Oh, I love those ages. Oh, yep. Debbie brings up a good point. You can watch this anytime. Later, it'll always be on the Facebook page. It will also be on my YouTube page. So there's that. <laughs> you know how I can be. I can just say it. <laughs> I try. In my heart, I'm British. <laughs> okay, so that's it, you guys. I'm so glad. Oh, look at my cute little loop strap. I love it. Anywho, uh, this one, I believe this one was on linen, if I'm not mistaken. So it just depends. You know, look at this one. This didn't have any quilting and see how it's just going to float around on this side. That can be fun, too. And yes, I've done glitter. <sighs> I just, you know, why is it every time I work with glitter, it's everywhere, including my eyeballs? I don't know. So I'm I'm not doing that again, <laughs> but do it if you like. Um, yay. All right. Well, thanks for being here and be sure to subscribe to my newsletter. If you're not already, I, I send it once a week with links and info and offers. And this weekend there's going to be an offer. This pattern is already on sale. Six bucks. I mean, my cappuccino costs that when I make it to Starbucks, you know what I mean? So I don't think that's very much. Um, I think it's worth it. And uh, thanks for being here. If I already said that, I'm saying it again. Thanks for liking, subscribing, sharing, you know, all that stuff. I have to say it. <sighs> have a great weekend. Let me know if you make any. Tag me. I'd love to share. All right. See you later. Ciao. What's the British word for bye? It's probably like ta-ta. See you later. See you later, friends. See you later.